What up YouTube, TK here, and what you are looking at is a Nexus 5X phone that is on charge. Now, that in and of itself might not be particularly interesting, but you might notice this sort of haziness on the screen. That is condensation because the phone has been in a airtight container in the freezer overnight. You might ask why I've done that. Well, after the latest over-the-air Android update, my phone would no longer work. It was stuck in a boot loop, stuck at the Google screen, and then after that, it wouldn't start up at all. I tried everything I possibly could. I couldn't even get it into recovery mode until I read somewhere that the issue is related to hardware, related to some kind of solder connection issue on the main board. I need to recover some data off this phone, so I threw it in the freezer as per some random instructions on the forum. And it looks like we may now be out of boot and hopefully we can get all our files off before this thing dies again. Oh my God, it's actually booting. I cannot believe it. That is awesome. The phone just crashed and also it's getting very, very wet from condensation. It is not good at all. So this recovery is not really going to plan right now. First attempt was unsuccessful. We managed to boot into Android, but unfortunately then it crashed and we couldn't get any further. Now we're gonna improve our second attempt in two ways. One, we're gonna use a Ziploc bag, which is more airtight than Tupperware. Two, we're going to use the hairdryer to make hopefully sure the air in there is as dry as possible because it's very humid today. In fact, I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but we'll do it. This is pretty much how I spend my weekends. Bit of fun. All right, hopefully that is nice and dry now. Oh, no, no, that was a mistake. It's melted the bag. So don't, don't use a hairdryer on a sandwich bag. There you go. We'll just, we'll just put it in the freezer. All right, it's been in the freezer again. Round two. Come on. Damn it. Not doing much. It's showing up as a little bit dead. That's what the orange light means. It means the battery is flat. We'll let it sit there for a minute, flashing, and then hopefully we can boot it. The amount of condensation that's happening is, I'm gonna say quite bad. <laughs> um, but really, I don't have a lot to lose at this point. The humidity today is like 70%, so it's kind of difficult to avoid. It's been about three minutes now and the orange light is still flashing indicating battery is really dead. I think there's a very delicate thermal balance here. I need to get the phone cold enough that it sort of, you know, boots. I'm not exactly sure why putting it in the freezer helps, but I also need to get it warm enough that the lithium battery presumably has, you know, some level of charge. And of course, just all this condensation, which is a terrible, terrible thing. Okay, this has just come up. We are successfully charging again, it looks like. All right, let's try and boot. And hopefully we can get this thing plugged into USB and get my files dumped. And then we can throw it in the bin pretty much because, yeah, I think it's pretty toast. Oh no, here we go, come on, come on. If you're wondering why I'm so desperate to fix this, it's because I shot all this video on it there's only one night's work, but I really would quite like that video so I don't have to shoot it again or make my video without it. Oh, come on. It's amazing how many people have suffered this issue with the Nexus 5X. It's absolutely ridiculous. Damn it! Oh, that's why I call it a boot loop, I guess. Alright, I've had a bit more of a think about things. The fact is, freezing the phone allows it to work a little bit better for a few minutes. That suggests the problem is thermally related. Now I've done some more research. I've looked at this Nexus 5X boot loop fix video from Tony Rednick. He uses a hairdryer to heat up the board. I've heard whisperings on forums around the internet that this problem may be related to bad solder joints, you know, ball grid arrays, they're always failing. We've seen this fix Xboxes, we've seen this fix PS3s. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the phone, which is fairly easy with the Nexus 5X, thankfully. We're gonna heat it just like Tony Rednick here did and see if that fixes it for us. If you can, always check out a teardown before you start disassembling your phone because this will tell you how to avoid breaking anything when you take it apart. I've tried to repair my phone so many times before and I always make mistakes and ruin something in the process. I've read the disassembly guide and I am ready to go. What is great about this phone is it actually uses 
Phillips head screws, which is cool. And it also requires a minimum use of those horrible plastic spudging tools. The back cover can actually be fairly easily removed just with your fingernails if you're in a pinch. So I'm pretty happy with the repairability of this phone. It's so nice having a common phone rather than having to do the disassembly on your own because you will inevitably end up taking something apart and ripping a little ribbon cable in the process or all manner of other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this phone apart, remove the motherboard, heat it up with our heat gun, which in my case is a hairdryer, put it all back together and then hopefully it'll run long enough for me to recover my files. Now, another great thing about the 5X is all these screws are the same size, which is just absolutely brilliant. The iPhone 6S, I believe, had a 1.0 millimeter screw and a 1.2 millimeter screw, and if you mix them up, it would brick the phone. So this sort of thing is much, much preferable. So we'll just safely put those screws there. Always take it slow when you're doing something like this. Don't press too hard on things unless you're absolutely sure you have to because you will end up ruining your day. Now keep in mind, I'm only doing this repair to recover some files, so I only need the phone to work for another 20 minutes or so. You will wanna be more careful than I am if you're intending to still keep using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm told we have to remove the battery clip, the front camera clip, the rear camera clip, which is proving a little more difficult. Nope, there it goes. The clip for the screen, which I believe is that one. And then we should hopefully be able to lift the motherboard. Come on. There we go. Come on. Excellent. Ah, now this is interesting. There are metal shields over the chips. Now on the video I saw on YouTube of the guy heating this, those metal shields were not there. That could be a problem because it will interfere with heat transfer to the chips. So what are we gonna do about that? That bothers me. Ah, uh, now it appears they can just be very gently leave it off. So that is thankfully a win. I was worried they'd be soldered. Excellent. Now from what I've seen on YouTube, you don't actually need to put them back on. It's most likely they're there for FCC compliance. The phone will still function, at least in some way, with them removed. Of all the phones I've ever repaired, this is by far the easiest to work with. It's very difficult to break anything, unless you're being really careless. And everything's very modular. In fact, the only thing that isn't is the USB port, which is soldered to the board. All right, hey, ho, let's go. Yep, those are hot to the touch, so hopefully that's done the trick. We'll go ahead and reassemble. Moment of truth. Well, that's a good sign. That was a bad sound. Oh my God, we were so close. What went wrong? We're gonna plug it into the laptop and see if we can get that running. Damn it. It's looping again. We'll try and go into recovery mode. Okay, we didn't get a full boot happening, so instead I booted it into recovery mode. I'm hoping this is going to do something or anything. Generally, with anything like this, you end up trying a bunch of different stuff. Eventually, you get the thing limping, and you either throw it in the bin or you get what you need and then you throw it in the bin. Okay, we haven't gotten this far in a long time. Oh my God, it actually booted. Let's turn on file access and let's quickly copy everything we bloody well can before it overheats or melts or it stops. Okay, I'm actually successfully getting into my files. This is excellent. I'm actually successfully getting into my files. 
Now, obviously, as this is a thermal issue, I don't want to keep the phone on for too long. I just want to get the files off as quickly as I possibly can. So I'm just scrolling like a madman. I'm not even interested in the photos. I just want that video that I spent all day shooting. All right, got the files. We're going to copy them, not move them like we normally would, just because we really don't want to risk losing them. And this transfer might take a couple of attempts. Cannot wait. Okay, so the phone lasted for around about 15 minutes, which was long enough to copy off everything I needed. The phone is now appearing quite dead again, so I reckon we'll give it one more hit with the hairdryer. See how that goes. And yeah, then we'll either call it dead as a doornail or fully repaired <laughs> or somewhere in between. It would be interesting if somebody at LG actually knows what the precise problem is here because, you know, plenty of people are having this problem. Have been having it since, I don't know, something like uh, late September. So I wonder if they actually figured out which chip it is that's badly soldered or so on and so forth. We gave that a good tough old heating for a good 45 seconds or so, maybe even a bit longer than that. We'll go ahead and put her back together. I can't figure out how to get these shields back on, so they're going to stay off, unfortunately. I want to see if I can actually make this thing last long enough to do a full factory reset. Now, normally I would never screw something back together before testing it again, but as I've already completed my primary objective of recovering my videos, I'm really not too worried about what happens next. Anything we get working from now is just bonus. Switch is on. So the reason for freezing and heating, it's all thermal. When you heat things up, when you cool them down, they change size. So when we freeze it, it probably would have just shifted some of the solder joints and brought them just into enough contact to conduct properly. Hence allowing the phone to boot until it heated up again. Freezing isn't great though, because you run into all these problems with condensation and water getting on the board. Now heating is also good because often, especially in this modern electronics with these ball grid array chips, what happens is the solder balls don't always melt properly and it only takes you know a single solder ball joint to fail to brick your entire phone. So heating up with the heat gun or the hairdryer actually helps in that it can just sometimes make the difference and rebond those joints well enough to get you a few more months out of using your phone. Oh, we're on 3% battery, so we're gonna whack that straight on charge. So we're just gonna leave this here to charge up for a good long time and then see if we can do a factory reset after we also try and recover a few more photos. All right, final verdict after leaving it to charge for an hour, it is again no longer responding. If I really go hard, try and put it into recovery mode, it'll come up generally but that's about it. It's just, it's not booting properly at all. I'm calling it pretty dead. Fundamentally, it's a hardware problem. It did happen after an update, like immediately after an update. But yeah, the fact that the temperature changes do actually bring it back for a short period of time suggests that it is definitely hardware related. All right, I went and gave it my longest dose yet, a full two minutes of the hairdryer. I'm going to not only try and copy off my photos, obviously I already got the videos, but I'm also going to try and flash a recovery image. Yep, we are booting up as expected. No such luck, we are looping again, so the hairdryer fix is in no way guaranteed. Power, plus volume down, going to try and get into recovery mode because we're not getting a full boot here. Just want to see that little bugger with his no command. Okay, we are in recovery mode. Excellent. So we will go to apply an update from ADB. We've already formatted the cache before. Okay, so we're in that mode, whatever it exactly means. We'll plug in the USB. And now I'll go back to the PDF and try and figure out what I'm supposed to do. So it's trying to update. Hopefully it works. Taking its time, certainly.
Okay, not entirely surprisingly, the phone just died in the middle of the operation. So yeah, this is not just some simple software problem. The hardware of the phone is just, you know, dead. It's just weird that it would be brought on by a software update, which is what everyone says. So I think I have a better understanding now of what's going on with these Nexus 5Xs because I've been looking up boot loop problems all day. A whole bunch of people said they had it in September. A whole bunch said it in December. I'm having it now in March. What I think the problem is, there are so many updates for the Nexus 5X and other Android phones that no matter when your phone dies, you're going to assume that it was the update you installed like a day or two ago. There are so many updates that you're going to think, well, if my phone's died today, it was probably that update from two days ago that did it. When actually, I think as we've shown today, it's clearly a hardware problem. But them's the brakes. And obviously you can tell from the state of my phone that I work it pretty hard. I throw it around, I take it to the beach. It's not that surprising that eventually it started to fail. Disappointing, yes, but in no way surprising. So at the end of the day, we weren't able to fully repair the phone, even with the hairdryer trick. We were able to boot the phone up, get my videos off, and that was about it. The phone died again. We haven't been able to get really any more life out of it, unfortunately. But, you know, if all you need to do is get the phone running long enough to steal a few files, go ahead and try this out. Some people have had really great luck with the hairdryer method. They've gotten weeks, months more life out of their phones. For me, it was a stop gap. It got me running for about another 10 minutes, but that was all I needed. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, like and subscribe. And yeah, till next time, TK out.